You know, I am trying to bring an important concept to you. It's difficult for many people to understand. And I am very concerned about the idea of the COVID storm. Now, when I say it, many people think that I mean the COVID cytokine storm in severe disease. But no, I am speaking about a prediction of an autoimmune response on re-exposure to the COVID virus in people whose immune system has been primed. I was going to say the V word, but I've held fire because it can in theory occur in someone who has had previous priming, priming even from infection. It's an important concept and one that I don't think people quite get. And there is very little pleasure in saying I told you so in the future. I think some very important research has to be done urgently in order to clarify this. And so therefore, I have put together, or I have made the idea of a video, this has been put together by Lumientia. So I'm gonna play an 11 minute video, which is going to liken what happened in 1918 flu pandemic to what I think could be also going to still happen potentially within a time frame that is very difficult to predict. So let's go. And what I want you to do is when it's finished, please put your comment in, say what you think. It will help people to see it and help us to at least have the discussion. Let's get started. What if I told you that one of history's deadliest medical disasters could be happening again? And we haven't noticed yet. In 1918, doctors thought they were saving lives. Instead, they may have accidentally caused hundreds of thousands of deaths by vaccinating people against what they thought was causing the Spanish flu. They were wrong, and that mistake caused deadly immune overreactions. Fast forward to 2024. Some researchers are noticing strange patterns with vaccines based on spike proteins that are eerily similar to 1918. Immune systems that remember what they're supposed to forget and death rates that still haven't returned to normal. In this video, I'll present a disturbing hypothesis that touches on the parallels between 1918 and today and why some scientists are quietly sounding the alarm about what they're calling immune system priming. To understand what's happening today, we need to go back to 1918. World War I killed 20 million people. What came next killed 50 million more. The Spanish flu didn't just kill, it hunted. It targeted the young, the healthy, the strong. Soldiers who survived poison gas, bullets and shrapnel came home to die from the flu. Viruses hadn't been discovered yet, but in the lungs of the dead, scientists found a particular bacterium and they reached what seemed like a logical conclusion. This must be the killer. Armed with this knowledge, they launched one of the largest public health campaigns in history Millions of vaccines, not against a virus, but against this bacterium, were quickly manufactured during the 1918 to 1920 Spanish flu pandemic. Hundreds of thousands of people received bacterial vaccines in a massive effort to save lives. But things quickly took a dark turn. Unknown to scientists at the time, these bacteria contained deadly toxins that bind to our cells, this can trigger the immune system to start destroying healthy cells. In extreme cases, the resulting inflammation is so severe, it creates what is called a cytokine storm, which can be fatal. A cytokine storm is when the immune system goes into overdrive, flooding the body with inflammatory proteins called cytokines. Think of it as friendly fire. Instead of targeting invaders, the immune system attacks everything, Lungs fill with fluid, organs shut down. It's not the pathogen that kills you. It's your own defense system turning your body into a battlefield. What we had 
was that in 1918, almost, I think, 80% of the military were injected with bacterial products, which would include priming their immune system to lipopolysaccharides. The immune system being already primed to the endotoxins overreacts to the bacteria and destroys the lungs. It was a hyperactive cytokine mechanism that caused most of the deaths it seems because young people were dying it was very unusual young people normally tolerate influenza the best and one has to ask if that many people had been exposed to the bacterial endotoxin by inappropriate use of a vaccine at that time did it contribute to the cytokine storm To avoid this, millions of years of evolution programmed our bodies with a safety mechanism. Fight these bacterial toxins when you encounter them, then deliberately forget about them. Remembering is too dangerous. But researchers now believe that the bacterial vaccine created a ticking time bomb by forcing the immune system to remember when vaccinated soldiers later caught the flu, they developed secondary bacterial infections, the exact same bacteria they'd been vaccinated against. Their primed immune systems triggered a cytokine storm, causing organ failure. Evidence suggests that this was not because of the virus, but in reaction to toxins, their immune systems had been forced to remember. It is likely that many died from their own immune system's overreaction to the bacteria. The vaccine meant to save them could have become the weapon that finished them off. And one has to ask if that many people had been exposed to the bacterial endotoxin by inappropriate use of a vaccine at that time, did it contribute to the cytokine storm? We then have the same question. The immune system seems to be treating the spike protein in the same way that it treats bacterial endotoxins. It doesn't want to remember it. Just remember, long live plasma cells here. This is comparing flu to tetanus to um, spike protein. Nothing after two and a half months, nothing after 14 months, a dot after 23 months. The immune system doesn't want to remember this. And so therefore what it could indicate is that it's treating it more like a toxin similar to what happens with the bacterial endotoxins. This is now where Houston, we have a problem. Because if this extrapolation is correct, if the immune system has been primed to overreact on further exposure to spike protein what happens down the line the virus is still circulating what does it mean when immune primed systems get exposed over and over again to the spike protein jump ahead 102 years new pandemic new vaccines designed to produce spike protein but research suggests that spike protein triggers inflammation. Your immune system treats it like a toxin, something that should be forgotten. In bone marrow, where permanent immune memories live, there are virtually no spike-specific memory cells, because remembering could trigger a massive inflammatory response. The pattern is identical to 1918. Encounter, clear, forget. This raises an uncomfortable question. Did we, with the best of intentions, use spike protein-based vaccines to inadvertently prime the immune system in a way we didn't fully understand? The most important question that I would like people to answer is how on earth can you explain? Look, for example, uh, what is happening in the current pandemic. Look what is happening with the flu pandemic in 1918. How can you explain that all of a sudden the virus shifts to a much younger population, right? And that's what we are seeing right now. 
these healthy people uh, who remained healthy during the previous waves are now all of a sudden getting disease and severe disease, despite the fact no underlying diseases, uh, no, not immune suppressed, etc. How can that be? They must be immune suppressed because of the high infectious pressure that was built up, uh, re-exposing them very soon after they got their previous infection. This is to say at a, a moment in time where they were still having antibodies that were suppressing their natural antibodies. That is the only explanation that you can give to this. We haven't yet seen 1918 level deaths for two possible reasons. First, repeated mRNA shots could create special antibodies called IgG4 that may dampen the immune response and prevent overreaction. But IgG4 doesn't stop inflammation. It makes it chronic, quiet, persistent. We are seeing notable increases in inflammatory conditions. Not explosive deaths, but steady damage which may lead to death by a thousand cuts. Second, recent COVID-19 variants have been milder, but the virus is still evolving. And our trained immune systems are waiting for the next trigger. What happens when a severe variant emerges? When it breaks through our cracking defensive shields? Every new COVID-19 variant is a potential trigger, just like in 1918. Our primed immune systems are waiting. The signal is already here. Excess deaths occurring over years instead of months or weeks. But one wrong mutation could compress years of damage into days. In 1918, we forced immune memory of bacterial toxins with vaccines. In 2020, we forced immune memory of spike proteins with vaccines. Both times we overrode millions of years of evolutionary wisdom. Both times we thought we knew better. The virus is still here, still mutating. Every booster, every variant may be one evolutionary roll of the dice away from repeating history. Where medical interventions could make health outcomes worse. Will we listen to what our immune systems are trying to tell us? Or will future historians look back at us the way we look back at 1918, wondering how we didn't see it coming. Powerful video, and it's encapsulating an important concept. It's encapsulating the extrapolation of the science, and this is the important point. Many people will say, even contemplating what I've said is misinformation. This is not about misinformation. This is about an extrapolation of the science linked to immune, abnormal immune responses, dysregulated immune responses on exposure to spike protein, which caused the cytokine storm in the first place. What happens down the line? And when we look back at 1918, it's important to understand that when I did that research, trying to understand why young people were so significantly affected, I then recognized that potential link to an overreaction to bacterial endotoxins. The immune system doesn't usually try and remember it because it creates such a strong immune response. If we see a similar kind of process, even partially. That's what I call the COVID storm. Spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. And it's something that, as I said, I have predicted for a long time. It's more to do with the fact that I've seen this pattern um, in the sense of, I'm just going to show you this image here. This is what it looks like. Recurring COVID infection, in a situation where you have underlying immune priming from whatever source could lead to that storm. And that's the storm that largely I'm concerned about could still happen and is still potentially on the horizon. If we don't look carefully and prepare for that, if there is no risk mitigation, I think that that would be the big mistake at this point.
let's hope that I'm wrong, because if I'm right, and so far the extrapolations have been right with what I've predicted, there is a lot of trouble ahead. Have a good evening.